and a good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good and wonderful people of the tube. Hope all today, hope you're feeling grand and all when you world. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, today, people of the tube, we are talking about the legendary bluesman, Mr. Peter Green, again, and uh, what I believe to be a long forgotten but super important thing. <laughs> I can't think of how to word this properly, uh, uh, to basically get not only his tone right, but also his playing style right. I think this is mega important, and it gets overlooked all the time. It, uh, in all fairness, I don't really think I've ever seen anybody talk about it, and I've always been confused about that, you know. Anyway, what it is, people with dupe, is pickup height. Now, this, like I say, I reckon is, like, literally... It's one of the key elements. It's just one of the key elements of Peter's playing. Uh, I'm going to sneeze. One sec. And I'm back. Oh, that was a strong sneeze. I sneezed up my esophagus. Anyway, but yeah, pick up height. It's, I honestly believe it is like, if, well, it's definitely one of the most important components of Peter's playing. It's not really, this isn't something to be overlooked or taken lightly. This is really, really important to getting that sound. Uh, so before we start talking about P Peter's pickup height and, and, and what it does and how it works, I want to mention something really, really quickly. And um, this is kind of like my attempt at kind of like leaving no stone unturned, so to say. Um, Peter's 59 Les Paul had what I call high wall pickup rings. Now, Gibson don't make guitars unless it's a, 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 like a, a, like an R8, R9 or a Murphy Lab or a reissue of an old Les Paul with high wall pickup rings anymore they make them with these kind of standard pickup rings which are a lot lower they're a lot smaller and as a result of that invariably what you get is like what's going on here with my upper people tube is you can see on the bridge pickup the pickup actually itself the actual kind of like you know cover goes uh and if it doesn't have a cover the bobbins they actually go above the pickup ring whereas on Peter's Les Paul, and I again, I, I modded my greenie here, my uh, lemon drop a long time ago, with these high walls. And you can see here that these are a lot bigger, a lot taller, and that they're actually more, you know, hi these are actually historically correct to what would be on Peter's Les Paul. And if you look at that, uh, there's that amazing video of him doing oh well on that TV show, you get an amazing view of, um, of uh, greenie, and you can see how close the strings are to that pickle ring. And here's a picture, actually. Um, I, I stole this off Mike Hickey's uh, Instagram, but you know, I, I think we'll be okay. But it's of greeny, and you can see how tall the pickle rings are, and you can also see like how they mask the entire humbucker inside the ring. You know, they're, they're, you, they're, they're just hidden inside there. So here you go. So you can see there clearly how close the strings are to that pickle ring. You know, and you can also see that the pickup itself is actually housed very snug and, you know, kind of hidden, if you will, inside that pickup ring. Also note on that picture as well, Peter Tube, that the uh, rings themselves are actually not screwed flush to the body. There's actually a gap at the bottom of them to, um, I, I, I'm guessing that's something they've done in recent years. So the pickup rings don't break. So I can imagine they're quite fragile now. Uh, but they've kind of eased off the tension on them because if you screw... Um, those old high wall pickup rings down all the way, they can break, um, you know, because with the curve of the top of a Les Paul, you know, they, they, they can break quite easily, again, especially being old and fragile. So that's really important because um, if you go for this mod with lower pickup rings, you have to compensate for that. And as a result, invariably, your pickup will be above, like my Epiphone, above the pickup ring. But bear that in mind, the strings... Yeah, you know, the string and pickup thing, it, they need to be quite close. Anyway, so yeah, bear that in mind. Like I say, and on, I say on my greenie, I've got the, the high wall ones, which are a lot, you know, a lot taller. And um, they just kind of like house the pickup better. And again, I don't really know why Gibson don't do that. I've actually done this to uh, this lemon drop. I did it to my gold top and I did it to my Gibson uh, standard. Uh, oh, and I lost my plectrum. Um, and I just like the way they look more. And also, they really help when kind of 
getting the pickup heights right for a greeny thing. It's not the most it's not the most major thing in the world to have like the high wall pickup rings, but uh, I think it helps. And also, I don't like one thing I really hate people with tube is when the pickup is above the pickup ring because I kind of play over the pickups a bit every now and again. I hate it when my plectrum hits the top of the pickup ring and then goes up onto the pickup cover. Drives me insane. Anyway, that's why I love these ones way more and they're pretty much on all my Les Pauls. So, um, so yeah, so anyway, that's something to bear in mind with with tube. That's, again, that's my attempt at kind of like trying to be uh, as thorough as possible. Just bear that in mind. So let's get to what, what do I mean about pickup heights and why is it important to get Peter's tone right? So what Peter would do with his humbuckers, he would sink the E, A, and D side, the base side of a humbucker, he would sink it to below the actual pickup ring. It's really low. You can actually see under the top lip of the pickup ring. And then he would bring the treble side up slightly. So it was maybe about a millimeter, millimeter and a half, give or take, above the pickup ring on the treble side. So base side sunk, treble side is bought up. So the pickup's like this. It's not the slight angle that we're talking literally, you know, wonky donkey. And I found this picture people with you, but it shows it really well. That video of Oh Well shows it really well as well. How many wells can you get into? Well, 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 well. But this picture is from Peter's days in the Blues Breakers, which means he was doing this with his pickups from day dot. So this picture, this picture here, you can clearly see that the bass side is sunk. It's really, really, really low down. You know, you can see under, you can see like the, where, the, where the, screw, the mounting screws go down into the pickup ring. And you can see like the treble side is bought up. And so that's what I've done on my greenie. And that's what I do on pretty much all my Les Pauls now, apart from the Adam Jones and the Epiphone. All my other Les Pauls are set up that way. Because I, I find it just sounds better. Uh, and let, let me show you what I mean by that. So, like I say, what that essentially has done is half the output of the E, A, and D, and it's brought the output up of the G, B, and E. And what you get is, to my ears, a really even sound with no bass getting in the way. Uh, let me give you an idea of it. So we're going through the Fender Deluxe here. Uh, it's cranked all the way up to distort, to kill but I've got the attenuator on all the way. So it might still peak the camera, but hopefully it isn't too bad. But this is, a, if I play a G minor chord, this is what you get. If I play the Green Manalishi chord, there's a stand there. You know, there's no crazy low end. Whereas I always found when I had the humbuckers in this Les Paul or any of my Les Pauls uh, flush with the pickup rings, like, you know, like Greeny is now, uh, Gary did that. Gary is the first guy to do that with that Les Paul. Well, maybe the first guy uh, af after, Gre after Peter Green had it. I find there's too much low end. Uh, and I find you compensate for that with your amp. You make it brighter. Whereas I don't think that's... If you're going after the green, Mr. Green sound, is the way you want to be going. It wants to be this. This is really important. You know, this is the voice of the guitar. And if these aren't right, it ain't going to give you the right voice. Um, and again, like I say, Gary Moore had the humbuckers flush with the pickup rings. You can see it um, in pictures. And you can see it now with Kirk Hammett. The pickups are flush with the pickup rings. Again, Peter didn't run them that way. And it's really important to play like him, uh, to, to be able to play like him, to have the pickups this way. So, like I said, and it gives you a really more dynamic sound. It gets rid of all the low-end flub, especially when you've got a, you know, an amp cranked to the teeth. Um, and also, what it, what it also enables you to do is play more dynamically. Uh, you know, they're, they're those, those kind of runs, I've spoke about this before in my Peter Green lessons, where Peter would be playing like um, this kind of like fastest blues lick. And when he went to the D, A and E strings, it would almost be inaudible. But then he'd come back to the G, B and E and it would be loud again. And that's because of the pickup orientation. Let me give you an idea. So pick up uh, my volumes all the way up on 10. You know, we're on the neck humbucker now. Um, 
I'm going to give you an idea. I'll, I'll try and kind of emulate one of those runs. It's really, really difficult. Um, but yeah, so just watch for the, the dynamic drop. And again, I'm not touching the volume control. <laughs> dig in so much harder on the low E A and D to get them to come out more. Whereas the G B and E just sing more. You know that and uh, that is all down to the height of the pickup and how Peter ran his pickups again at that mad angle and again no one does that no one does that anymore I've not I haven't seen anyone talk about this or do this and I've always thought and felt it's massively important I actually believe I have done a video on this in my how to play like Peter Green series I think I've actually covered it already but I kind of want to do a bit more of an, an update with it and I think when I did those first videos I didn't have this guitar either I just had my Epiphone which is not a good representation of, of that tone it's of that vintage Les Paul tone it's a lot more modern that thing anyway but that's really important like I said and it gives you that more even Les Paul kind of thing so E and D if I go down the strings independently you'll hear the difference in volume I'll pick them all the same yeah you hear the difference in volume Also the difference in output as well. Listen to how low gain the E, A and D are compared to the G, B and E. Like I say, what I gives you the ability to do is you don't have to be as reliant on the volume control to get those huge dynamic shifts. Obviously you do if you're kind of like on the G, B and E doing... <laughs> You know, if you're doing that kind of thing, but if you're on the, you know, flat out and you're doing those crazy, those kind of crazy fast Peter runs, you know, you don't have to be reliant on getting to the volume control, which can be an absolute nightmare, you know, to kind of like, you know, to keep doing this kind of thing. And again, I don't ever believe Peter did that as much as it sounds like he's doing it. I reckon he was just in complete control of the guitar and the volume. And having the pickups this way, I reckon he just found that it worked for him. And again, it really works for me as well. I absolutely adore this. And it makes sense, really. Because that's how I have that's how you I have it on Fender Strat. So I have the bass side sunk and the treble side brought up. And it just makes the guitars more even sounding. And again, on all my Les Pauls, it makes them sound better. And again, especially if you're going for that Peter Green thing, it sounds even closer. Especially those kind of like starts of slow blues as you would do. And again, just easing up your hands gives you so much dynamic. I could do that all day. And again, by the way, no, no pedals at this point in time. This is just guitar and amp, like it, like it should be to get Peter's tone. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically it, people would I just wanted to like you know have a quick rant about that because it's so important, I think, to getting Peter's tone. It also helps with the out of phase mode as well. Uh, when you know when the pickups are kind of out out with each other, you really get. I find when the pickups are kind of flat and level with each other, out of phase, it sounds good, but it's not quite Peter. It's not quite that Peter Green tone. Whereas with the pickups in the, at the heights Peter ran them at, like I say, with the bass side sunk and the treble side brought up, it really lends itself to that. Especially when you get down here. If you're playing like A minor, it gets really shrill. <laughs> It really is that sound. Yeah. 
you know, sounds right to me. Another thing as well is like oodles of reverb when you're doing those slow bluesy Peter Green things. Peter was like the blues guys of old. They would plug into a Fender or his orange and they would crank the reverb. There was lots of reverb. And again, it just helps with the sound. If you turn the reverb off, it's dull. It sounds all right, but it's a bit meh. A slight bit of reverb is kind of okay. But lots of reverb is the way to go. And he does, it, it's, because of the pickup heights are that way, it's so even. You know, n there's no ever super thumpy low end, it's just spot on. And again, if you go to the bridge humbucker, and I do some bit more rock stuff, which again, Peter would turn the reverb off for. Yeah, you can't, you really hear, I can't play it, sadly. You know, if you do that kind of like. It's so important. It's so important. Um, I, I, I say, people, to you, I had to do another video on this just to hammer it home. Like I said, I think I've already done one, but again, it was with the Epiphone. I'm pretty sure. Or if it wasn't, I'd be, I'd be surprised. Um, I'm not sure I had this guitar. I mean, I know I didn't have it when I started that series, so I'm pretty sure that video is with my Epiphone. Anyway, but again, I reckon this is key. This is a this is a point that no one speaks about when talking about Peter Green's tone, and like I say, you can see it all over pictures with him with with Greeny and and and, and videos and that and some of the things I've shown you, you know that that picture earlier on with with the with the uh, with the Blues Breakers, he was doing it then with John Mayle. Also, who are you? I just want to put this picture in here. Check out the settings on the JTM forty five head behind him. Check that out. That's. That's a setting. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Just put it all to 10 and we'll just play. I love it. That is such a cool picture, that, that that picture is. And I love the fact that, you know, you really get to see how sunk the bass side was on his Les Paul. Um, it, and again, word of warning, be careful doing this because if you get... I don't... Pick up screw length, this one here that kind of adjusts the height on a humbucker vary and you could do what i did and have done many times when doing this to those poles is you screw it you're screwing it down and it falls off the screw uh i i did that to when i was setting this pickup when i was doing the pickup height of like this to my gibson i was winding it out and it, it fell off uh which was very annoying um so i had to, yeah you have to take strings off and get the pickup ring out and remount it it's a nightmare so just be aware pure tube if you if you do go for this and i do recommend this i do recommend at least trying it it might not be for you but it's worth trying um be aware of that you know just be careful when screwing it down it might be worth taking the pickup ring like getting the strings off and take a pickup ring off to do it i didn't i just did it like an idiot uh on the guitar with it all strung up but maybe it might be a better idea to do it either way i don't know uh but yeah it's definitely worth it and again like i said i reckon this is really important to getting not only the sound of peter right but also that whisper to a scream technique down right as well because like i say it really gives you that ability to go <laughs> without really touching the volume control you know, you can do so much. The guitar becomes so much more dynamically uh, present and alive where when you do this pickup thing. Again, and especially Fat Peter Green style, you know. Mm -hmm. 
I say when I have these humbuckers flat and flush to the picket rings, like I say, like they are now on Greeny, and like you know, every you know every Les Paul I see, it just isn't. It doesn't. They don't respond right you know um i think i've got i think i've just got used to playing with the pickups in this orientation again i think that's what peter did as well i don't know what made him do it unfortunately we'll never know and we sadly can't ask him anymore um but i do wonder what made him do this for the first time because like i say he was doing it in the blues breakers it was just before fleet with mac he was doing this sunk humbucker thing you know and it was always like that you know the the pickups were never flush with the rings like they are now and like say 90 you know 99.9 percent .9 of humble les, les pulls are um i just i just don't know when or why and uh that's always going to be a mystery sadly and it, it kind of breaks my heart really I, I wish i had got to meet him um i really want i really wanted to meet him i really wanted him to get to i really wanted him to sign this guitar and you know, obviously you know and rightly so, people were kind of, really kind of like, you know, no one really sees him. And But I really wish I could have done. It's kind of one of those things I, I've kind of, I'll be all, forever upset about. I'd have loved to ask him certain things. And just to be in that man's presence, because Peter's really important to me. And his guitar playing is literally insane. His tone is insane. And his way of playing is insane. And again, I'm I'm only scratching the surface of him. You know, I'm nowhere near anything. You know, it, yeah, I, 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 I try. Yeah, but Peter to me is so hard to play. Like he's so difficult. The whisper to a scream thing, the phrasing, the emotion, and the power that man had behind his guitar playing is outrageous. And um, yeah, it, to me, he'll always be the best British blues guitarist of all time. No one will ever beat him. Bar none. There just there isn't gonna be another Peter Green ever. And um the way he could play and how he could, how he could play is just mind blowing. It it's just mind blowing and, and again, you know, you have to listen to him play. I just wish there was more footage we could see him play. There's barely any footage of him playing and it, it, it breaks my heart again to to know that so much footage of other guitarists and no footage of Peter and Ah, oh, so annoying. Anyway, Boo Chew, I'm going to get off. But yeah, like I say, this, I feel, is mega important to get in, like I say, not only the sound and tone of Peter, but also to play like him. The techniques and stuff like that that I teach in my How to Play on Peter Green series work so much better and work properly with your humbuckers at that height. That pickup height is so, so important. You know, um... I think I think pickup height kind of just gets kind of like you know eh, it fit what they are, but it, it really is important. You know, I I really when I get a new guitar or whatever, I really just sit for hours. I will literally tweak my pickups half a millimeter if I think there's slight you know if it sounds slightly better, like half a millimeter higher or a millimeter higher or two millimeters higher. I'll tweak it to how the guitar wants to be, and you can kind of feel that. You know, um, these pickups uh, are pretty much identical to Peter's, where Peter's are. Judging by those pickup, uh, those pictures of these pickups, they're pretty much identical to where Peter's was. And again, the volume you know and again it, it, that's what always got me was like how is he so active and i don't think he is i reckon it's just a case of because of his pickup heights he, he his guitar was a lot more controllable apart from a bridge humbucker uh you can hear in certain slow blues songs which i would love to put in right now people tube to demonstrate this but can't uh, you would in, you invariably know when peter has gone to his bridge humbucker because it whistles it's very microphonic. That 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 bridge pickup with Greeny seemed to be quite microphonic compared to the neck pickup, uh, which Peter what Peter was on the neck pickup 
85% of the time. You know, the bridge pickup gets a look in every now and again, and out of phase gets a look in quite a bit. Uh, but the neck pickup alone is where Peter was a lot of the time. And he talks about that in some later interviews where he talks about just having a guitar with just a neck pickup. Just simple, no messing around, just a volume and a neck pickup. Um, and again, that that's where he was. That's where he lived. And again, that's that. That's that. <laughs> That's the sound, you know. Um, anyway, there we go, people. Chat. I'm going to shut up waffling now because I, I, I'm hoping I've got, I've kind of like, you know, spoke to a point enough where it actually makes sense, and this has actually been kind of like coherent. Uh, I always get a bit kind of like, you know, kind of ah with these kind of videos because I'm always afraid that I'm, I'm giving out. I say something wrong, or, or I haven't included something or something. I don't know. Hopefully I've got it right. But like I say, this is super important, I think, to Peter's tone and also playing style. It's really, really important. Um, never put off pickup hype, people of YouTube. It's really, really important. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video, people of YouTube. I will see you again very soon for another video. Uh, if you like the videos, please consider becoming a Patreon. At Patreon, links to that in the description box below. It's literally the only thing that keeps this channel going. YouTube seems hell-bent on weeding out old killing old channels like mine now because it's been going for over 10 years they kind of seem to want me out of the way so they're making it very very difficult they're not really recommending my videos they're not telling people who have subscribed to my channel that i've got videos out so the thing that keeps this channel going like you know is uh patreon and obviously you know you are watching as well but uh you know um patreon gives me the ability to do this for a living you know, uh, as my job. So if you are a Patreon, thank you so much indeed. If you're a patron on Patreon, thank you so much indeed. It means the world to me. It's like, I am, um, you know, it's it's insane. But your support means the world to me. So thank you so much indeed. And yeah, anyway, I hope this video has been kind of, like I say, ho hopefully somewhat informative and interesting. And other than that, I'll see you again very soon for another video of YouTube. Have a great morning, afternoon, good evening. And yeah, I'll see you again. Um, yeah, goodbye now. Thanks for watching. Again, go on, try this. Just be careful. Just don't screw them down too far so it falls off the screw because it isn't fun. Anyway, bye now.